Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio here with Gina B. Aaron's design team for the April prompt, which is cut or paste. I made a box last week that I'm going to show you for today, but I'm not using this box. It's just an example of what's to come. I bought a bunch of paper mache boxes to, in 2011, 2012 for my business when I had um, a in-person craft business where I would go from place to place. And I didn't, when I moved here from Virginia to Texas, I cleaned a lot of stuff out, but you know, there's certain things you just can't let go of. And I could not let go of these. Now these were painted white. See, I have the year down here, 2012. Um, I painted them white and then took gold rub and buff and did the corners. Then the other, and the other day, I pulled them out because I was looking for a new thing for a video, and I took Gina Aaron's scribble stamp, scribble print stamp, which has got to be, I think that's one of my most favorite stamps that she has, is the one with the scribble words. Love it. Um, so I took it and inked it with some black stays on, and print pressed it down all over the box to decorate the box. Then I have something inside, but I'm not going to show that for now. All right, so for the cut and paste, what I did was I took another box that I had that was white with the gold around it, and I printed off some of Gina's digi prints, cut, it, cut them up, and glued little tiny strips to cover up most of the box. I want to leave a little white on the corners and stuff because I will end up putting some kind of distress something on it eventually. But this is one of Dean, uh, Gina's digi prints on the box cut up and glued on there. So when I printed this off, I printed it off on eight and a half by 11 computer paper and I thought, oh, that'll be so cool. I'm going to make another box like I made the first one and use Gina's stuff. Well, this is how my mind works. <laughs> so the first one I did, I used leftover painty paper and here it is. I call it book in a box. This is leftover painty paper from my drawer. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 of these. So that meant I needed 30 pieces of cardstock with enough paper to do two sides. Then, you know, the grow grain ribbon in the middle that holds them together. Well, I glued the painting paper on each piece of cardstock, and when I went to glue the two pieces of cardstock over the grow grain ribbon, that worked because you need two sides, and you can't just do a one-sided piece. Well, you could, but I didn't intend to have it where you could only see one side and only use one side of it. All right, so I fold it back up, and I put it in the box, and I got all excited. I thought, wow, I'll do, I'll do a Gina project that way. So I printed off, went through her digi prints that I had access to, and printed them off on paper. And then I thought, well, that's really dumb. <laughs> Why did you not do it on cardstock? <laughs> so I went back and I printed off more digi prints, but at this time I put them on cardstock. So now I don't have to glue anything on them. So I will cut my pieces, I th the little squares in this box are one and a half inches by one and a half inches. So what I will do is I will cut these strips, the, I'll cut the white off of these and do one and a half inches because all I want is the color. I don't want a lot of the white on here. And I'll cut one and a half by one and a half. But I still will have to take two pieces of cardstock and do them back to back because that grow grain grip ribbon is in the middle and that's the part that holds all this together. Alrighty, so I'm not going to show you cutting all this because it's kind of boring. Let's face it, watching someone cut paper in one and a half inch squares, not that stinking exciting. So I'll be back as soon as I get them cut. I will show you how I put them together and then we'll go from there. So I'll be right okay. back. Okay, 
I finished cutting all of the um, digi prints that I printed off and I went digging through my stash to find gray ribbon, grow grain ribbon, which I like better than satin because it has all those little slit marks in it where the the grain is and I think it does a better job folding back and forth than satin ribbon so I didn't have a solid gray but I had a dotted Swiss gray so that's what I'm going to use because if you notice Gina when she did her prints has a lot of gray tones or colors that go with gray um, in the digi prints that I printed off, there's gray and a little bit of everything. So um, I decided that this would be the best color ribbon overall to connect the squares. Let me go in. Yep, a little bit close. There we go, a little bit closer. And this is how I put them together. Oh, this is the kind that has the sticky on it. Oh my. shoot. Well, it doesn't mean I have to peel it off, right? But that means there's no gray on the other side. Okay, need to rethink this. Okay, well, right I just back. found out something fascinating. I did not understand when I bought these, there was a difference between these two types of ribbon. They're both, um, this is satin, but there is a grow grain that's this. All right, so the satin ribbon that's like this the Primo from AC American Crafts is the kind that has the little sticky plastic part on the back so you can just lay down the ribbon and stick it on there. But if you buy this stuff that does not say Primo down here, this is the stuff that does not have the sticky on the back of it. And this was what I was actually looking for in the first place. All right, so let's see how long it takes me to figure out how to open it. Oh, well, that wasn't too bad. Okay, so this is none of that lovely plastic stuff on the back. All right, so instead of using regular scissors, I like using these more sturdy scissors because grogring tends to fray. And you got to cut quite a few of these things. So all I'm doing is just taking off a random amount so I make sure that when I glue it on, it's going to glue onto two different cards. Oops, that didn't do a very good job. All right, so let me show you. Now, all these, I don't know how many of these I have. I had 30 or 24 of the other ones, so I need double that amount. So I may have to go and print more off. I just don't know, so I'm gonna get started at least. All right, so because I don't trust um, stick glue for this. I'm going to use the Aline's glue because yes, it takes a little longer to dry, but I think it's going to be more dependable than stick glue. Although I do love stick glue for paper, but I just don't think it's going to make it for this. All right, so let's, oh, let me start with gray. So what I do is I just take the little square and put the color side upside down. I coat the back generously with some glue. I lay down one of the grow grain ribbons that I've cut on one side. Sorry about the shadows. If I put too much light, you're blinded. If I don't put any light, you're going to be sitting in the dark. All right, let me see if I can adjust my light here. It fell off. I don't know. Well, that's probably not much better, but it's what we got. All right, so then I put a little bit of grow grain ribbon on the end here. All right, and then I just pick a random... It was gray, so let's do this one. A, a random piece of the other the other one I cut out. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on top of the grow grain, just on the end pieces that I'm going to connect. And then I just mash it down. Now you're going to let this dry overnight. Yes, I know it's distressing. You have to use patience. Gina and I are neither one known for patience. All right, so try to make sure you match it up as best you can. Nothing's going to be 100%, but try to get it as close as you can. So for the second one, because I have gray on the other side, I'd like um, a bright color. Actually, I'd like a pattern color. So let's see. This will be my bottom piece. 
So I'm going to coat it. And then I'm going to leave a little gap between this one and this one so that I can fold the grow grain back and forth in accordion style to put it in the box. So I just left, I just guesstimate it. Kind of put that down. Take the ribbon for the next one. And if you've got frays, it doesn't matter because it's all going to be covered up with glue and cardstock. Put a teeny bit of glue here to make sure it sticks on the fabric. And then I think I would like some blue, which is this one. And kind of smudge it around a little bit to make sure it's even. They're all supposed to be one and a half by one and a half, but you know how it goes. Alrighty, so now I've got to make as many as I can get into the box so the box is full. To show you how I do the end, let me put the end piece on now and then I'll turn it around this way and continue off this way because I don't want to run out of time because I'm too chatty. Alrighty, so let's do what's on the back side here. That's an orange. Orange. So how about we do a blue and then we can do this color here. How about that? Okay, now this is going to require you cut another piece of ribbon, but this one needs to be the longest one you cut for this part. So you're going to glue like the other side, like I did the other ones. Whoops the glue down. Put this underneath it, leave a little gap so they'll fold back and forth accordion style. Put a little glue on the ribbon. Take this one, put it like this, put down your glue. Whoops, let me put this on here so I don't... There you go. And then you're going to fold this back to make a loop. Just fold it back in on top of itself, on top of the glue you just put on there. Because this will be what you pull it out of the box with, because you're going to need some way to grip it. If you don't, didn't quite cut it long enough, you can kind of scooch the top part up a little bit, because there's going to be another piece of uh, cardstock laying on top of it, so it's okay. Put some glue there, because that's a doozy. This one's going to be a little thick on the end, because you've got double the grow grain on the end. Let's see. Let's do this color. I don't think we've used this yet. All right, and then we're going to hold that down. Kind of scooch it around to make sure you got everything good. And if you squeeze it too hard, yes, the glue is going to come out and it's going to leave a nasty mess, so don't squeeze too much. All right, so there you go. There's your little tab. Let me scoot this back here. There's just a little too white, much white showing. There we go. So this is the very end of it. And this is how it's going to look when you do it in the box. You're going to go this way, this way, this way, back and forth and back and forth. And this, there will be so many of these. This will more or less sit up towards the top. When you close the box, you'll fold this back and put the lid on. All right. And look, the paper matches the outside of the box, which I'm very excited about. All right, so I'm going to... Uh, Go ahead and glue the rest of these, and then I'll be back whenever I'm finished. Okay, so I finished the whole line, and as you can see, I have a bunch of these still left, and I still have the um, paper digi prints that belong to Gina in a drawer next to me, so I'm thinking about doing a second box. I think that would be very cool to have a second one. These are orange, these are bluish. These are a different shade. Okay, so I'm scooting these out of the way, and then there's the ribbon I used. All right, so it is drying. It is still a little damp, and I don't want to fold it up and put it in the box. I made it a couple squares longer than the other one that I made, but here it is. Wait, you want to see it up close, right? Oh, where's the thingy? <laughs> this is terrible. All right, so here we go. Isn't 
It's just miscellaneous jelly prints that she made with her rubber stamps. You might recognize some of them if you already have some of her stamps. I know one of them already. This one right here. That's a stencil. All right, so this is the back side. Again, that's a stencil. I have that stencil, that's why I know. <laughs> All right, and there's the pull tab. So this end one right here, either side of it will be the bottom in bottom of the box. All right, I'm gonna let this dry. And then I will decide what I'm gonna do with each one of these. I honestly did not get very far in my thought process. I was just gonna show you how to make this, but now I feel like I should put something on each one of these, but I was hoping that you guys would use your imagination to um, continue the process on your own. But let me think about it and I'll be back maybe with something on each one of these. Okay, so I was looking, i back you back out, sorry. I was looking through my file that has all the my Gina supplies in, and I found this box right here, I mean this paper here, and of course I have another box with the white and the gold. But I'm thinking I might like to cover the other box in this because I think I have enough of some coordinated colors to use it for this box here. And I think I might have enough of these. I don't have to cut anymore. And I'll still do the gray grown gr grow grain in between. <gasps> Let me glue. Okay, so this is the last of the video. This is going to be the reveal. Okay, so I've showed, uh, well, I've made four of these. <laughs> that was never the intent, I swear. So this one has Nothing on it. I'm waiting for some um, small images to come in the mail so I can pick through those. I don't think I have quite enough to do this one. Oh, I'll show you that one in a minute. And then I'll show you this one. And then, what is this one? Oh, this is the one that's, okay. All right, so let me swap two of these out. You know, <laughs> I need to put something on these so I know what it is I'm doing. All right, so not this one. All righty, so here we go. Now, the original one I did for this um, challenge was this one. So let me get you in really close. So on each one of these, there is a mini mandala. No two are alike, and it's all on Gina's digiprint paper. Now, I did all the drawing, but she supplied the backgrounds. All right, and I did not attach it to the box. Now I'm gonna flip it over because I did it on both sides because why waste good paper? So this is the back side. Sorry. And then as I said before, it'll fold up like, like this. Put it back in the box, do it this way. And it does sit up pretty high in the box. Just fold my little tab in. And you can have a longer tab, but I just, when I did this, I made it short. And then the box. So this is a Gina B. Aaron's Digi Print Books in a Box with my mandalas. All right, so I got to talking to Gina and decided that she had sent us something in the mail with her newest stickers. And I decided that I could possibly do yet another box, don't laugh. And there's her one of her digi prints again. I cut the paper and covered the box. But I took her little stickers with yet her background paper and I made another one with her little sticker stickers 
The ones that were too long, I put over two of the tiles. Don't they look like bacteria? <laughs> All right, so that's side one. And I don't like wasting good backgrounds. Now this one is the bottom of the box. I'm thinking about attaching this to the box. I haven't quite got there yet with it, but I, I might attach it. Here's one that was too beautiful to put just on one tile. I didn't want to adjust the image or anything. I wanted to leave it the way it was. Now I have doodled around this one and I intend to doodle on the rest of them. This one's been doodled on. This one has not. This one was just outlined. This one has been doodled around. And I'm going to doodle around these guys on the front and the back. Isn't that cute? So go take a look at, at um, Gina's Digi Papers and the stickers. They are terribly cute. Terribly cute. And they're an easy doodle thing because if you don't really doodle doodle, then all you have to do is like go around them in a black marker of some kind, like a thin black marker, put a couple dots inside the blue and call it a day. I'm going to fold in my little tab. There's that one. I already showed you the one that has mandalas in it. Is this the one? And then, oh yeah. So I had extra paper and I decided that I needed to do another one. So I started this one this morning. I don't, there's only two things on the back. So I decided I would do mandalas on one side and just, whoops, focus, general doodles on the back side. Because this is kind of tedious work. It takes a long time to do these because there's like 30 of them. And it, it does take a long time. So here again is all the little things. And you know what? This was, I think, from five... Prim, I think this was from five Digi Papers that I got all these little squares for these boxes, these three boxes here to create it. Now, this box was done with her stamp on it, but all of this is my painty paper. So there you go. Purchasing digi prints is really a, a great idea because you can use them over and over and over. You can make them large, small, you can use them in journals, you can use them for background papers, you can use them for a bazillion different projects, and you've already paid for it one time. That's it. And then you can use it over and over and over. Okay, so that's it for me for the design team video for the month of April. I will see you guys in May. Bye-bye.